The following broadcast is brought to you by the friends and partners of Revival Ministries International. Now you know why we started the River Bible Institute. Yeah. More young people will be lost in these secular universities. I don't care if they call themselves Christian when you have professors that are backslidden and don't even believe the Bible. And the problem is many of the professors are not successful in ministry. They never were. They're just intellectuals. And so when you have professors that have never done anything in the ministry. You can imagine what they're telling the students. Are you with me? You gotta have people that are successful in what they do to teach and impart. Amen. You know, we've been attacked mercilessly by groups and people call, you know, that what we do strange fire. The head of that whole movement, his son's just been indicted by the, uh, for fraud, 16 million dollars from, and he's the one that attacks Joel Osteen and attacks all prosperity, but his son just got indicted by the SEC on fraud, 16 million dollars. So I tweeted, said, maybe Joel Osteen's owed an apology right now. So you can attack prosperity, then your son's defrauding people out of 16 million dollars. So I wonder where the strange fire is. You understand what I'm saying? That's what happened with Nadab and Abihu. You can't run around and attack other ministries, think you're going to get a free run up the side. It's going to backfire on you. The chickens are going to come home to roost. And you attack the Holy Ghost, you're in a whole heap of trouble. Somebody said, well, I don't understand. That's fine. There might be a lot of things you don't understand. But if you don't understand it, don't say anything about it. Just leave it alone. People also say, look, I don't understand it, so if I, I have nothing to say. And it's better that way. Otherwise, you end up sinning with your mouth. Amen? Praise God. I should go ahead and receive the offering tonight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, church, let me just say something to you. Everything with the Lord is, is out of a relationship. It's out of a relationship. It's not out of a ritual. Some people, they try to heart. It's not heart. It's easy. Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. Well, take your Bibles and go with me to the book of Acts, chapter 2. We'll complete what I started this morning. Verse 14. But Peter, standing up with eleven, lifted up his voice. And said to them, 
Ye men of Judea and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known that you hearken to my words, for these are not drunken as you suppose. Seems but the third hour of the day. But this is that, everybody say this is that. Which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I pour in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Now, I love that because he shows you sons, daughters, men, women. You know, it covers everybody. God's going to use male and female. Can you say amen? amen. I think the gender classification is very evident there. <laughs> amen. And then he goes on to talk about the young men and the old men. So that means it covers all the age groups and both genders. He says here, I'll show wonders in the heavens above, signs in the earth beneath blood and fire, vapor, smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness. Now, some people can say, well, that's just an eclipse of the sun, moon, and the blood. Well, you could look at it that way. But in actual fact, we actually have the sun at that right now. Because the sun is at the lowest activity. There's very few coronal mass ejections. And so that happens on a cycle which is called grand solar minimum. That's why we actually moved into time of the cooling of the Earth's atmosphere. Because when that takes place, uh, the Earth's shields are weaker, but the rays of the sun and the solar winds still come again. You can study it out. Uh, a million, million and a half, sometimes two million miles an hour, and the rays are magnetic and they react with the inner core of the earth, and that's what causes the earthquakes and the volcanoes. And of course, when the dust of the volcanoes gets up in the atmosphere, it blocks out the rays of the sun even more, and that's what the temperature is dropping. We're not in the heat, you know, like they all think global warming, which, as you know, they change it from global warming to climate change, but there's always been climate change. And the polar caps are not melting. In actual fact, the ice is thicker than ever. And I know that because I've studied that. There's a website called realclimatescience.com with all the the data in there. Somebody said, well, why is NASA putting out fake numbers? Because they want to push the uh, global warming narrative or the melting of the ice and, you know, the the, the sea levels are rising. Well, if that's the case, why would the the Obamas spend $14 million on a mansion right on the coast if the sea levels were rising? I mean, obviously, they don't really believe it. Otherwise, you wouldn't buy a house on the coast. You think we're stupid? We're not stupid. Are you with me? Who's going to spend $14 million on a mansion right on the coast when the sea levels are rising? Come on. So we're not, we're not, uh, we're not stupid on this whole thing, but... And, and that has to do with, with global governance and, uh, of course, carbon tax, $1.5 trillion a year. I'm just going to let you know. But we are in that time. Well, blood moons, how many know there's have so many blood moons now? The moon's really suffering, you know, it's been bloodied so many times. So uh, God says, I'll show wonders in the heavens above and the earth beneath blood and fire, vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness, moon to blood before the great and notable day of the Lord. Come, well, I believe we're right at that place. I believe we're at the closing of the ages. Can you say amen? Now, that could still mean there's another 30 years left, but in comparison to eternity, it's like that. It's a flash. I mean, when I was looking at that clip, 2017, and here we are, 2020. Do you know, it'll be like this, we'll be in 2025. We'll look again, it's 2029. It's, life is but a vapor. I'm glad that the Lord gives us a designation of night and day because we wouldn't sleep. I'm glad the Lord has confined us to time periods of 24 hours in a day. And I'm so glad that the Lord's given people a lifespan on the earth. I can't imagine what it would be like running around yet 500 years old. I know before God shortened man's lifespan, they were living 900 plus years. Then God brought it down to 120 and then brought it down to 70 or 80. You know, and people still live to 100, which is fine. But, you know, there comes a time when you have to say goodbye. (laughs) 
It does. <laughs> it comes a time when you just have to say, you know, I'm out of here. Amen. And you should do that when you're happy. When you, when you, you know, you shouldn't do that when you're sad and miserable. You should do it and say, you know, I've run a good race. It's time to head on out of here. And you study the lives of great men of God. That's how they go. And, but I've heard some terrible stories of men of God going over a cliff, you know, in a car. That's not the way to go. I've heard of stories of men of God being hit by a truck at 100 miles an hour. That's not the way to leave the planet. Amen. So if you're going to leave, leave in a good way. Amen. Amen. Don't, don't leave any other way. Some say, well, you have to die some, somehow. Well, die preaching. Amen. I think Wigglesworth finished preaching, went and sat in the back room and, and just dropped his head and was gone. He was still dressed in his suit, just with his head down, you know. And that's the, that's the way to go. Dr. Lester Sumrall went home, I think he was 86 years old, and he had written a book called Goodbye Earth. It was nice knowing you, you know. And I was with him five weeks before he went home to be the Lord. And a friend of mine who was on the plane with him a week before he died, because he used to write books. If you walked in his office, he had books that were half completed or three quarters of the way. He probably authored 70, 80 books. And um, he would write on a pad with a pen, which I like to do that. I do all my stuff like this. And part of the stuff is I put the stuff on computer and then you can never find it. You can't even, Apple does an update and you can't find your notes. You've got notes there. I hate it. I can't stand anything. Where is this? On some hard drive and then you can't even access the hard drive. At least this, the batteries are not going to run out on this book, you know. It's there. And uh, I can write it down. I can see it. I can find it. And so I like, I still like to write. I still like to hand write everything out. There it is, you know. And, and that's just me. So I want to see it and, you know, put it out there. And uh, I can't tell you how many notes I've lost on this thing. Thousands of hours of notes, and you can't even find them. You can't even type them in search. Apple's, they're going to do another update tonight. Software update will be automatically installed. iOS 13.3 is available. Great. What, so you can slow it down more and then tell me I need the new phone? Lying devils. It's a scam, guys. It's all a scam. Stinking scam. Okay, moving right along here. It shall come to pass. Everybody say, it shall come to pass. That whosoever shall call in the name of the Lord shall be saved. So I believe that's the time that we're living in right now, that... In the upheaval, the shaking of the nations, the people are going to be crying out. There's a hunger. There's a desperation. And I think even at the time of these upheavals of the pestilence and the plagues that are taking place, I heard that an area in Italy just got quarantined 50,000 Italians somewhere in, in Italy can't move because of the coronavirus. And now they're finding it in Iran and other places. So, you know, obviously there's a whole plan behind this thing and uh, there's no telling if, if that ever starts happening in America, if they have to start quarantine whole cities in America. So that's why we pray fervently against it. We curse that virus. Even tonight, we just take a moment, we curse that virus. We curse the coronavirus. I curse that thing right at the very atomic level. I curse every cell. I command it to die. The moment even comes on these shores. I don't care who brings it, how it got on here. I curse that thing. I curse that virus. It will not spread. It will not go to major population centers. It will not come and invade our towns and our cities. I curse it in the name of Jesus. How many are with me on that? But this will be a time of great desperation, and that's why it's going to be even greater to be able to even preach and proclaim the gospel. Because at a time like this, when the world's in upheaval, it's God shaking the nations. Everything that can be shaken is going to be shaken. But this is also a great time of harvest because people start questioning everything they know. 
when everything around them is failing, when systems around them are failing, when doctors say we can't do nothing for you, when the bankers don't know what to do, when this situation, everything that people have held dear and trusted in, in the flesh, is failing them, they start crying out, start looking for God. And that's the desperation. That's the desperation we see on the foreign field right now because they're worse off. This is really the safest place to be right here in America, believe it or not. I was thinking about it even on this tour. You know, you check in a hotel in a major city in Australia and they're measuring people's temperature. And then suddenly they find five people with the virus. Then they quarantine the whole hotel. Now you're stuck in a hotel. Think about that. So we were praying. I mean, why well, use my faith just to get to the next city, you know? Because you didn't know what was going on. So it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call the name of the Lord shall be saved. And then it says, Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, the man approved of God among you by miracles. Everybody say miracles. And wonders and signs which God did by him. So we're talking about the supernatural church, which this has been removed from many of the Pentecostal denominations. It's not a supernatural church. It's a natural church with natural reasoning, natural understanding, natural preachers preaching natural messages. Just nice little messages, hashtag. But no one exercises their faith in the supernatural. And some of it is because they're afraid that, you know, well, I don't want to ask God for something and then I end up with the devil. Why would, if you ask your heavenly father for a piece of bread, he's not going to give you a stone. Would you give that to your child? What parent is there that would give their child poison? The Bible says, if we being evil know how to give good gifts to our children, how much more will our heavenly father not give good gifts to them that ask? So you ask for the Holy Ghost, you're going to get the Holy Ghost. And you can trust him with that. You can trust him with that. So this morning we mentioned four kinds of miracles, notable miracles, continuous miracles, diverse miracles, and special miracles. You can, you can watch the rerun on the YouTube channel. This should be a daily occurrence in our life. Every day you should be expecting the miraculous, the supernatural intervention of God in your life. Who needs the miraculous even this next week in some of the things that you believe in God for? Amen. Well, guess what? It's available for every single one of you. Every single person in this place, the miraculous, the supernatural intervention of God in your life is available to you. In your home, in your marriage, your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, amen, even the animals that you have around you, amen. Your parrot will be the most blessed parrot on the face of the planet. Amen. <laughs> He'll even speak in tongues. <laughs> Now we started on supernatural protection, which we looked at as Acts 28 verses 1 through 5, really the story of Paul when they landed on the island and were making a fire and a serpent came out and fastened himself on him. And it's a poisonous snake. They, the, 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 the natives on the island thought he was going to drop dead, but because he didn't drop dead, they thought he was a god. Because he just shook the snake off and it fell to the ground. Shook it into the fire. And so I just say this to you prophetically here tonight, no matter what bites you, no matter what comes on you, you'll shake it off into the fire and it shall not harm you. Now that's a prophetic word right there. You can take all the way. Can you say amen? You just take it and just shake it off. Hallelujah. Poison shall not harm you. Remember this, one of the things that comes with the great commission is the great protection. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. These signs shall follow them to believe. In my name you'll cast out devils. You speak with new tongues, lay hands on the sick, and it shall recover. If you eat any deadly thing, it shall not harm you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If somebody tries to poison you, they won't be able to kill you. Yeah. 
If they put poison in your food, they can. They put poison. You don't need a food taster. You don't need a Ministry of Helps that's a food taster. <laughs> I brought my armor bearer. He tastes my food. And then he dies. Oh, I guess I shouldn't eat that. <laughs> Poor armor bearer. Isn't that great? Somebody said, what do you do? I'm a professional food taster of Bash Rodney. I travel around the world and taste all the food just to make sure they didn't put poison in in case they try to kill him. Somebody said, how many, how many food tasting armor bearers have you been through? Uh, let me think, 17. <laughs> it's not bad, we travel around the world, but uh, we do lose armor bearers, you know. <laughs> Eat, I don't want to pass. Eat. <laughs> Eat the cookie. <laughs> Eat the cookie now. Munch, munch. I guess we shouldn't eat those. Honey, we should not eat these cookies. We just lost another armor bearer. Fly a new one in from Tampa. (laughs) Say this, poison shall not harm me. I'll shake it off. Amen. That means poison in the air, poison in the water, poison in the food, wherever it is. Or even, let me say this, even poison in the medicines. I was talking to a lady this this last week and she said her mother at 58, totally normal, had a flu vaccine, and she said she's a total invalid now. She, she can't, she's on tubes. And she's basically just like a vegetable. Just went for a flu shot. So you have to understand, we, that's why I started doing communion every Sunday, because I was like, almost like, Concern for the people, for the congregation. I thought, how are we going to protect the congregation? I can't get up every Sunday and talk about all these things and try to warn people, don't eat that, don't do this, you know. Don't drink those diet sodas with that fake sugar. Don't do it, don't do it. That health bar is not a health bar. That bar is just sugar. You're not going to lose weight on that bar. I don't care if you bought it at a fitness store. It's not a, it's not a lose weight bar. That, you might work out an hour, but it's going to put it on the back left cheek. <laughs> that thing is full of sugar. That's why you're working out, but your butt's growing. I always get amused. I'm sitting with people. Yeah, I'm on special keto diet. I look at them and go, yeah, it looks like you really have been dieting. I can see that. <laughs> As they shovel another piece of food into their mouth. Yeah. <laughs> so there's protection. I said, there is protection. Somebody said, I'm trying to build abs. Looks like he built them in the wrong place. (laughs) But that's fine. It's all padding.
I knew you'd be encouraged here tonight. <laughs> Go with me, Psalm 91. Okay. So here's something which I really want to encourage you this week to really take the psalm every day, go through it. And we actually apply this on a daily basis. Every time we get on the airplane, this is the first thing I ever do. I mean, right as the engines are cranking up and the things are, it's a father, thank you for the privilege of allowing us to fly. You said you, if we delight ourselves and you, you cause us right on the high place of earth, we can't do what we do without being able to do this. And we understand not many people get to do it, but we don't take it lightly and we don't, we don't see it as a right or that we've even earned it. We just, it's part of the mission. And so father, we commandeer this, this vehicle for the purpose of the kingdom of heaven. Thank you for the anointing upon the pilots upon everything mechanical, electrical, all the computerization, the hydraulics, the fuel lines of this aircraft, nothing can go wrong. This thing will fly the way it was supposed to fly and we will go from this place to this place. And we, we, declare, we declare our starting point and our finish point and we shall return. Thank you for the angels that are camp about us. Thank you the blood of Jesus on this aircraft in the name that is above every name as we taxing as the things running along the highway, the runway, I just shut up, broke over some praying in other tongues. As we take off, I, I put my hand in the air and then that's it. I commit the whole thing to the Lord. And I do that. It's just like a habit. We just do that. That's what we do. Now, some people, you know, say, well, should I do that in the car? I don't, look, the way some people drive today, you should do a lot of things in the car. <laughs> These people shouldn't even be driving. These people, they, they're near sight. They're blind as a bat. They can't see anything. They're colorblind. They can't see it was a red light. It looked green to me. I've never seen so many people running lights. Are you with me? You have to check when you cross, even when it's green. You have to check because people just come through lights. How many have noticed it's got crazy just driving on a highway? You have to really pray in tongues just to drive down the highway. It's hazardous out there. It reminds you of those early computer games where you had to dodge cars coming at you. Remember that? That one where you're on the screen and you don't remember that. Yeah, it's just like that on the main, on the I-75. Welcome to the I-75. Try to go to Orlando. And then in a rainstorm, it's even worse. People can't even drive. They pull and hide under a bridge in the rain. You would think it was a blizzard. I mean, the wipers working as fast as can, it doesn't clear anything. <laughs> do you think they actually do that on purpose? So thank God for Psalm 91. Okay, let's read this. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shed of the Almighty. That's your decision. Just because you're born again doesn't mean to say you're abiding in the secret place. I know many people, they saved, they love God, but they don't look like they're in the secret place. It looks like the devil knows exactly where they are. And he comes and smashes them every day. He plays whack-a-mole with them. That's not funny. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall remain stable and fixed under the shadow of the Almighty, whose power no foe can withstand. That's you. Amen. 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 And I will say of the Lord. That's why I say this. He is my refuge and my fortress. This is your portion for the close out of the month of February and the whole of March. And just make this yours every single day over your house, over your family, over your loved ones. Can you say Amen. My fortress, my God on him I lean and rely and in him I confidently trust. For then, for then when I say, then he will deliver me from the snare of the fowl. If you don't say it, if you don't declare it of yourself, there might not be deliverance for you. That's why some people are not delivered. I'll say of, 
of the Lord. He's my refuge. For then he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and the deadly pestilence, which is what we're seeing in the earth today. Deadly pestilence. I was thinking, I said to my wife, imagine being stuck on a cruise ship. Then they quarantine you and let you out for an hour and a half on the deck. And imagine you wanted to go cheap and you took an inside cabin. Now you're stuck in the inside cabin. That would just be like being in a prison cell. It would be better to be thrown overboard and take your chances with the sharks. Are you with me? But here's what it says here. Then he will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you shall trust and find refuge. His truth and faithfulness are a shield and a buckler. Now, now this is your portion. Listen carefully to me now. You will not be afraid of the terror of the night. So I was thinking this about, because maybe, obviously, does anybody had their temperature measured anywhere uh, in Florida? Okay, so let me take you where we've just come from. Every place, there's thermal scanners, and there's people with temperature guns, and when you walk into a building, they go like this, on your head, and they read your temperature. You can't go in without. How many times did you get temperature? Six times in one night. That's before you can go in the building. Restaurant, hotel. So then I would say, I would like to know what my temperature is, please. Then they tell me, I said, yeah, it was that this morning. But I have a fever. You know me, play, play around with me. Then they measure you again, just to check. So can you imagine, you leave church tonight, you go home or you stop by a restaurant and they're busy measuring your temperature. That's, that's what's happening. Wow. Everywhere. As you walk in a hotel, as you go into restaurants, everybody's checking everybody's temperature, which is something I normally do just in church. <laughs> <laughs> but we only measure three temperatures, hot, lukewarm, or cold. And we try to get you to run a high fever in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen. Because your high fever in the Holy Ghost is contagious and it will spread to other places. Can you say amen? So I don't think you understand the scenario of what we just came out of it. I mean, this was how it was in Singapore. This was how it was in the Philippines. And where else? I can't even remember now. Where else were they nuking us? In Indonesia, everywhere we went. And, and then... The doctors came on the plane in the Philippines. Oh, the doctors came on the planes? The doctor and the nurse came on the plane in the Philippines. In the Philippines, taking everybody's temperature before they could let them off of the plane. Wow. Sorry, sir, you have a high temperature. Now, suddenly you find yourself, you can't get in anywhere, so what are you going to do? You're going to walk the streets. You're going to have to find a place that will let you in because you have a high temperature. This is what's happening all over Asia. We either believe this or you're in serious trouble. Who's ever had a fever? It's natural. People have fevers. We were carrying luggage and I was sweating. You think, oh God, I pray my temperature doesn't go. But it's not. You're actually sweating because you're cooling down. You know what I mean? Your temperature is still normal even though you're sweating. But they literally, the reports coming out of certain parts of Asia, that people actually walking around the streets like zombies because they have nowhere to go.
And I'm not saying this to put fear into you. I'm just telling you what the, that's why we curse this thing and we do it every day. Every day you think about it, you curse the coronavirus Amen. and whatever other virus they have on the back of it. Amen. Just curse it. This is your psalm. Amen. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you will not be afraid of the terror of the night, nor the arrow of the evil plots and slanders of the wicked that fly by day, which there are many of those, nor for the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor for the destruction and sudden death that surprise and lay waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side. 10,000 at your right hand. It will not come nigh you. It will not come nigh you. It shall not come nigh you. Only a spectator shall you be. Some say, what are you? I'm a spectator. I'm not a participator. I'm not participating in your... I'm not participating in your fear. I'm not participating in your, your virus. Amen. I'm participating here in Psalm 91. I'm actually giving you a high dosage. This is a very high dosage of Psalm 91 the other day. I'm shooting you up on this stuff. Some of you are going to get shot up big time. I've got angels with giant syringes running around sticking you right in your seat with the Psalm 91 injection here today. Glory to God. I'm, I'm actually, you don't even realize this, I'm actually on a Psalm 91 IV right now as we speak. I've got an angel walk. I've got to plug them my arm. They walk behind me holding the pipes. I'm in a Psalm 91 IV. <laughs> my problem is I see everything in pictures, so I apologize for you. Somebody said, I'm a spectator. I'm a spectator. And it says here, only a spectator shall you yourself be you are inaccessible. I love this. You're inaccessible in the secret place. So Corona comes knocking at your door, but it can't find you because you're inaccessible. <laughs> whatever, whatever the enemy has. You're inaccessible in the secret place. Somebody said, well, where is it? I can't tell you. It's secret. I can't tell you where the secret place is. It's secret. You're in the secret place. The enemy might hear your voice, but he can't find you. Because you're hidden in the cloud of God. Hallelujah. 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 Blessed be the name of the Lord. Ragamba, rakata, saprukusti, praare, stopaya. Let them call us crazy. Let them make up all things about. Let them say everything they want to. They'll die like a fool. <laughs> but we won't change. We're not changing one thing. This is the word of the Lord to us. We receive it firsthand. This is, this is a now word. This is the prophetic word. This is for us today. We be infused with this. Hallelujah. 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 You're dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. You're abiding in the shadow of the Almighty. You'll say of the Lord, He's your refuge, your fortress. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And I'm, I'm just a spectator. You know, it's easy. Spectators have the easiest job because you're not on the field. <laughs> They're getting crunched on the field. They're getting beat up. They're getting smashed on them. You're just sitting there. Give me some more popcorn, please. Thank you. <laughs> you're, watching, you're watching two MMA fighters go, go at each other, blood everywhere. People are being slammed in the side of the cage and one of them. You're sitting there. Another popcorn, please. Thank you. You're a spectator. Say this off me. I'm a spectator. I'm not a participator. 
Amen. Amen. Only as spectators shall you be yourself inaccessible in secret place of most high as you witness the reward of the wicked, which is obviously want to get people saved. Many are lost, dying, don't know Jesus. And how will they know if they don't hear? And so that's what we're doing. Now, verse 9 is so important because he said, because you made the Lord your refuge and the most high your dwelling place. So how many of you know Christians that haven't done that? You say, why haven't they done that? Because their pastor never told them to do that. So we said, well, just won't Psalm 91 automatically work for me? No, no, it's voice activated. It says, because you made the Lord your refuge and the most high your dwelling place. You have to make him. You have to make the Lord your refuge and the most high your dwelling place. That's, that's a decision that you make. As for me and my house, we make the Lord our refuge. We make him our dwelling place. Because you do that, there will no evil befall you. Neither will any plague or calamity come near your tent. Somebody said, well, I don't actually live in a tent, pastor. Well, it says your dwelling. Your tent could be a tabernacle or a house or dwelling. No plague will come near your dwelling. Can you say amen? Yeah. Why? Why? Because he will give his angels a special charge over you. In other words, God assigns angelic beings, angelic hosts to uh, look after you, to accompany you, to defend you and preserve you in all your ways of obedience and service. So I got angels. I got angels accompanying me everywhere I go. In your car, even though you might be driving by yourself, angels are sitting in the passenger seat in the back. You know, you're riding down the highway. Angels are there with you. They're in your house. They're out in the yard. They stand at the front door. You know, your dog can see it. Your dog can see the angels. It's like, hmm. <laughs> they go, oh, ooh. <laughs> old Fido knows. Are you with me? Amen. He will give his angels a special charge to accompany and defend you and preserve you. I like that word, preserve. You're being preserved. you preserved. You've got a preservative. Amen. Amen. You don't have to eat hostess Twinkies <laughs> or Ding Dongs. They have a shelf life of 87 years. You don't have to eat those things. Some people don't even need to be embalmed. When they die, they're already embalmed with all the chemicals they put in themselves. But God said he will preserve you. Amen. I, I, people meet us now. They, they look at my wife and I say, you people look like younger. They told us, they said, you look younger than you did in the 90s. They said, don't look at me. What are you people doing? You look younger than you did back in the 90s. They couldn't believe it. People said to us, How? How are you looking younger now than when you were then? What in the world are you doing? What are you on? I said, I'm on a Psalm 91 year. I, I'm, I'm being preserved. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I mean, people that haven't seen us in 15, 20 years ago, we, we, you, just, you haven't even aged. Oh, no. Thank you. I didn't know that, but I actually have. And then they'll ask me, what am I doing with my daughter? Where's your wife? No, the Lord will renew your youth as an eagle. I said, God shall renew your youth like the eagle. Maybe I'm too overboard on this stuff. Maybe, you know, I should have read through Psalm 91 and just quickly rattled it off and we moved on and just be a passing comment. I can't. This is major stuff right here. This is, this is, this is the real deal. This is organic. There's no GMOs in this, what I'm telling you right now. This is high octane, super duper, unleaded. This is... 
for shizzle, man. This is real. This is it. This is it. This is the real stuff. This is the real stuff right here. This is it. So these angels will accompany you, defend you, preserve you in all your ways of obedience and service. Now, somebody said, yeah, but what if I've been disobedient even in places of disobedience, the Lord will help you and carry you, but then there'll be some time when you know if you carry on, you'll cross the line. But he even is with you in a time of trouble, even if you get yourself into it. Because he's your heavenly father. And he loves you. And he likes you. Amen. He's not out to kill you. He's got good plans for you. Amen. So I know the plans I have for you. Amen. Plans to harm you, not to... I mean, plans to... Sorry. That's another denomination, sorry. Uh, plans not to harm you. <laughs> no, I know the plans I have for you. Plans not to harm you. Plans not to, not to, I'll correct, not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. These are the plans that I have for you. Amen. <laughs> I told you I'm having a hard time being with the time zones. So the angels will bear you up in their hands, lest you dash your foot on or against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the edda. The young lion and the serpent shall you trample underfoot. Which that's huge. I can understand you treading on a snake, but tread on a lion. That's next level. You shall tread on a lion? <laughs> hey. And then it goes on verse... 16, sorry, nine, what is that, 14. <laughs> because he said his love upon me. Yes, 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 yes. Here's another, here's another because you did it. Because you made the Lord your refuge. Because. Because, because he set his love upon me, therefore I'll deliver him and I will set him on high. Which is huge. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? Everybody say because. Because. Because I set my love upon him. He said, I'll set you on high because you know and understand my name. And have a personal knowledge of my mercy, which you need to know for yourself. My, my love and my kindness, and you trust and rely on me, knowing I will never forsake you. No, never. He'll never forsake you. And then again, he will call upon me, verse 15, and I will answer him and I'll be with him in trouble. I will deliver him. God said, I will deliver you and honor you. I will deliver you and honor you with long life, with long life. I will satisfy you and show you my with long life
no matter what you hear, no matter when you see on television and you hear the report, rebuke it, rebuke it. No matter when you hear the words of fear, rebuke it. That'll not come near me, won't come near my family, not gonna come near my children or my grandbabies. Curse those things in the name that's above every name. Why? Because this applies to you and you've applied it in your life. You've activated. Psalm 91 is actively working for you. Activated for you. There's no devil that can kill you. There's no devil that can kill you. The devil doesn't control your destiny. God controls your destiny. And you weren't put on yet to be snuffed out like a candle. We're put here by God on the earth for his purposes. And you fulfill them the full length of your days. Can you say amen? Psalm 91 has huge side effects. So listen, listen, you have to understand. I mean, in Australia right now, Australia is being hit so hard because of the thousands of thousands, tens of thousands of Chinese students that have not returned to university. There's top restaurants in Sydney that were Chinese are closed down because nobody's eating Chinese food. You understand the ramifications economically of something like this is huge upon nations. I think Adidas or Adidas or however you want to pronounce it, they just said they had to drop 70% of sales because everything, remember when they took all the factories and took them to China. 
So everything that's producing for the world is being produced in China. Now it's all on lockdown. People have no understanding the kind of global economic ramifications of stuff of what we're talking about. And I'll just say this, so it goes on record. This is a bioweapon, folks. That was built especially in L4 labs and was released at the time of the Chinese New Year to spread globally. So all the plan, that was all in the plan. Somebody said, I don't believe. I don't care what you believe. Who cares what you believe? I'm not, I know what the facts are. You know, if you look at all the stuff that is sold at Walmart, where does it come? Huh? Yeah. So suddenly, if you notice Walmart stores are not carrying certain things, it's because the shipments are not being made. So we say, oh my God, I won't be able to get that thing at Walmart. And I'm not, I'm not saying this to put fear in anybody. I'm trying to tell you what people are dealing with in other countries. We've just come from those places. People in America have no clue what's actually going on out there. But that was ultimately the plan. If they could bring that on these shores, they would love that to happen. Imagine the whole states locked down and quarantined. Whole cities in America quarantined. That, you, that's what they would love. Because then they can go around, they're going to the first thing start doing is confiscating all the guns. Which that'll be a cold day in hell with the devil singing Frost to the Snowman. That ain't happening. Boy, do I have a vaccination for that. That, that, that ain't happening. Not on our watch. Can you say amen? amen? And just so you know, I'm not suicidal. <laughs> I just have to go on record and say, I'm not suicidal. Everybody knows Epstein didn't kill himself. We all know that. Let me just say this. If you're a Democratic insider and you have intel, say nothing. You'll be dead. Somebody calling already for help. <laughs> if you blow a whistle, make sure it has no pee in it. <laughs> well, a whistle has a pee in the whistle. That's what makes the sound. What's wrong with you people? People don't even know how a whistle works. Jeez. I have to explain to people how a whistle even works. What a generation of people that don't know how a whistle works. We would do that when we were kids. We'd get a hold of a whistle and take the pee out of it. And people blow it. There was no sound coming from it. So that's all I was saying. Anyway, all right, move right along. <laughs> so, 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 Psalm 91 is my psalm. Amen. 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 Woo! 
We fully received it. Your immune system is being boosted right now. Come on, I want you to join hands right now. Come on, we, we're going to pray. We're going to pray. We activate this in the life of every person in this room. Those in your homes, join hands in your homes. Husband and wife, if you're driving on the road in the car, please keep your eyes on the road. Father, we activate, we activate Psalm 91 in our life tonight. In the name of Jesus, we receive this. We say of you, you are our refuge and our fortress. We choose to live in the secret place of the Most High, to bind under the shadow of your wings. No harm and evil should come nigh unto us. Your bowels is a wall of fire, and we thank you for it. We will sleep peacefully, and we shall sleep safely. We shall not fear by night, we shall not fear by day. We shall not fear as we travel by road, by sea, or by air. We thank you for your angels that encamp about us. Thank you for angelic hosts around every one, every member, every person that's part of the river family that you protect every one of your people here in their way of obedience and service. Thank you, Lord, we shall not be participators in anything that has to do with the fear of man. Thank you, Lord, that we are spectators. We will just see our eyes shall behold, but it will not come nigh unto us. No plague shall come nigh our dwelling. Every home secure, every home safe. Every time you travel by car on the highways or by plane or by sea, safe. Safe you shall be. And we thank you for that. 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 We give you praise. Thank you for your hand of protection. Thank you for supernatural protection. Thank you for your hand of protection. The Lord surrounds you. He's surrounding you right now. He's surrounding you right now.
You know, I was talking to one of the pilots, and he'd been flying one guy 25 times around the world, 140 countries. The other pilot was telling me, he said, <clears throat> he said, years ago, I was flying a Falcon 20, which is a plane that really is from the 70s, but a good jet. You, I mean, you wouldn't fly it today. They do have one or two models floating around. You can pick them up for a couple hundred grand, but it's just an old aircraft. And he said, I had to pick up James Dobson. I mean, heard of James Dobson. He said, I had to pick him up from uh, Colorado Springs and take him to Birmingham, Alabama. He said, we took off, and he said, about a half an hour into the flight, he said, the, the cabin filled with smoke. He said, I lost all electrical function, the plane, the engines went out. Uh, one engine, I think, there's a two-engine plane. And uh, he said, I looked back, and he said, uh, Mr. Dobson was in the back sleeping. That was all. So he said, we, we didn't really know what to do. Myself, he had the lady co-pilot, you know, and he said, the next thing, there's Mr. Dobson, comes up to the cockpit, says, uh, is everything okay? <laughs> the cabin's filled with smoke. Is everything okay? Uh, he said, yes, sir. He said, look, there was a fire, but obviously it seems to have gone out, so there's no fire. But he said, we don't have any electricity on the controls, I mean, on the, on the gauges and that. I can control the plane, but I don't know where we are. I don't know what's happening. But he said, I heard you are a praying man. And Mr. Dobson said, yes, I'm a praying man. And he said he was calm. He was just calm, you know. And he said, I tell you what. He said, I know what to do with the plane. He said, so let me, t let me ask you to do something. You go back there and you do what you do. And I'll be up here doing what I do. And I promise you, I'm going to put you on the ground. I promise you. You go back there, do what you do. You, you do your praying and, I, and, and I'll do what I do here and I'll do the flying. But he said, in reality, he said, Mr. Dobson said, sure, I'm gonna go, I'll go back there and pray. So he went back, said, never heard from him again, you know. But he said, I really didn't know what to do because the cloud cover, he said, I couldn't see the ground. I didn't even know how I'm going to break. You have to come through the clouds. You could come and land. But if you can't see the ground, where are you going to land? And he said, I was flying along. And he said, suddenly, this hole opened up in the clouds, this huge hole below me. And he said, I saw the river, and he said, I knew it was the Mississippi. And so my co-pilot was flying, it was a lady, and he said, he just said, I said to her, my plane, well, they can do that. If there's, if there's two people flying, they say my plane, that means you, le you let go of the controls and you let the other person take over because you can't have two pilots arguing, no, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. But if one pilot knows what to do, then you relinquish control of the aircraft to the other pilot. He said, my plane, and of course he took it. She said, what are you going to do? He said, I'm going to drop through that hole right there. And I'm going to follow the river. He said, well, what's, she said, what's that going to do? He said, well, I'm going to run the Mississippi. I'm going to go to Memphis because I know the airport's right on the Mississippi and I'll land right there. And so she didn't say, so he spiraled down, dropped through the hole, flew over the Mississippi and just stayed the Mississippi right till he got to Memphis. So he, now he's got no way of radioing, radioing the tower or anything like that. But he said, I knew it was a UPS hub. And the UPS planes were coming and so I saw a Boeing go in and I saw one behind and I slotted myself in between the two planes. And he said, they landed, I landed right behind them. And of course, he said, I was surrounded. There were truck, police, everything, whatever. And of course, the tower was giving him a hard time. He said, look, we've had engine failure. We've had a fire on board. He said, you mean you didn't realize that you lost control? You lost contact with the plane 30 minutes ago? What's your guy sitting up there on a, with his feet up, eating a donut and drinking a cup of coffee? Why did you not have fire trucks around my plane? And then the guy said, okay, so I'm sorry. I'm sorry, because they realized they were sleeping on the job. And so he said, of course, Mr. Dobson, we made out of the arrangements to get him on to where he needed to go. He said about a year later, I had to pick him up in West Palm Beach, and he got on the plane and said, how's old Smokey doing? <laughs> you know. But one of the things he said to me, he said he was calm as a cucumber. And he said normally people would just lose their mind. Smoke in the cabin. Oh, my God. What are we going to do? You know, but he said he was just calm. And that's what Christians are supposed to be in the middle of whatever. 
And that's where the stability comes. That's where people in the world will come to you and go, I don't understand why you calm at a time like this, but the Lord is the one sustaining you. And then you lead them to Jesus and they'll end up having the same peace that you have. And the peace that passes the all understanding. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. How many needed to hear this tonight? So, now I'm not anywhere near finished, but I'll continue next Sunday morning. I, you know, there's just too much here in this whole thing, but I'd really felt in my spirit, we had to activate this in our life. When you get home tonight, husband and wife go through it together. If you by yourself, then you don't need to talk to anybody else. Just open your Bible to Psalm 91 and just activate it again, personalize it. And tomorrow morning, when you get up, just take Psalm 91, just make this a daily occurrence this whole week and going into the month of March. Are you with me? This is your portion. This is what we give you. This Freely we have received from the Lord. Freely we give to you. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Supernatural. There'll be miracles. There'll be miracles of protection. There'll be miracles of protection. Some of you will have testimonies of supernatural protection. You, you'll say, Pastor, you, you won't believe what just happened. But the Lord sustained me. And the Lord kept me. I'll just share one quick story with you and then we'll close and, and pray. And then we'll just hook up with you, with you next Sunday. Um, when we were given that first bus, um, and we used it in the Great Awakening of 07, 08, 09, traveling across America, it actually had a matching trailer that you could put a car in and actually put my Range Rover. I got a 2003 Range Rover, you know, that I carry with me. And uh, I've had it since, two, well, really, I got it in, I think, October of 2002 has over 200,000 miles on it. And um, so I thought, instead of the ministry renting a vehicle, I'll just put it in the back of the trailer and I'll use that when we get to the cities, you know. Save money for the ministry. And, but it's long. You got a 45 foot bus, 45 foot trailer. It's a long thing going along, you know. So we were heading up to the Carolinas to go preach. And the driver of the vehicle, I knew, man, he was pushing it. I could hear it, I could feel the bus and you pulling a Range Rover inside a trailer, you know, it's, it's, it's heavy. And I could, I could feel it and I felt he was going over the speed. We were on a 95 heading up past north of Jacksonville, heading into the state of Georgia. And I said to him, I was at the back, you know, just lying on the bed, gonna doze because we were driving through the night. And I shouted, slow it down. If you don't slow down, we're gonna lose the trailer. It just come out of my spirit, you know, but people don't think you're prophesying. They think you're just talking, but I knew my spirit. You better slow this thing down. We're going to lose this trailer. And uh, he didn't. I think he was doing 90 miles. I don't know what he was doing, but we were booking it up the highway. And those highways are not really the best anyway. Potholes and terrible. It's like a third world country driving up. The moment you cross into the Georgia state line, it's, it's pretty bad. When they say the devil went down to Georgia, I can believe it. <laughs> and uh, and I, I shouted, slow it down, and he didn't. And I heard it, like that. I mean, I, and I knew we lost the trailer. I ran, I looked out the window. The trailer came, came off and went like this, and, and it carried on riding. Now, there's a double lane on the 95. So it crossed the lane. It crossed the middle medium. It crossed through the other two lanes on the other side coming down this way. And they crossed onto the side and plowed into, it plowed into uh, the ground. I'm watching, I'm watching. There goes the trailer with the Range Rover in it. And I said, bro, you just lost the trailer. So we get there. 
The range had come off the chains and smashed into the front of the thing. I mean, squashed the whole range in the front and the trailer, you know. So that's done. You have to just leave it on the side of the road. Well, for whatever reason, the insurance didn't run it off. I still have the range. They fixed it. I think they, I don't know what they spent on it, but the range, they, they pulled the concertina out. And, yeah, my wife knows the amount of what they, the insurance spent on fixing it. So anyway, so the range is still fine and it's okay. But it went through the whole thing. And then the reality of the whole thing hit me. That could have killed a whole bunch of people, you know. So God really protected us. I mean, the 95, do you know how busy the 95 is? Even if it's late at night, there's people everywhere. That thing could have gone off, could have been the death of many people. So what I'm telling you, when I, then I just begin to lift my hands and thank God, I didn't really care about the range at that time. The insurance paid for the range to be fixed, but people had forgot to insure the trailer. So I lost my trailer. The, the, you know, you know, you've got to insure your trailer too. You know, you can, it's important. Insure the trailer as well. But the ramifications of what could have gone I mean, how would you even, even function? You take out a whole family and children and people coming on holiday to Florida, you know, all because of some person who wouldn't slow down and a heavy foot on the gasoline, you know. But the Lord protected us. Think about it. Crossing two lanes through the middle. And the, the fact that it didn't turn sideways or roll or anything, it stayed straight. And then plowed in and stopped because of the, the hitch that just run into the, into the side of the, of the ridge. So God will protect you, even if you have an idiot bus driver. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's like I hear the Lord saying, tell them if they believe me, I've got them covered. God says, you believe me, you trust me, I've got your back. I've got you covered. It'll be okay. It, 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 it'll be okay. Amen? Are you happy about that? Say it's mine. No, it's mine. No, no, it's mine. Praise God. Come on, everybody stand. Let's get the band up here. So once again, this coronavirus is cursed. The plan of the wicked is being undone and ripped to shreds. Every single one of you will fulfill heaven's assignment upon your life. And you'll do it with great joy. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen. And now I bless you and I inoculate every single one of you. Amen. The only fever you shall have is the fire of the Holy Ghost. That's the only fever. The only places you might be kicked out of and not let in are religious places. Because when they check your temperature at the door, they'll say you're too hot to come in yet. And they'll try to quarantine you, I can tell you right now. But you will not be contained. 
You're about to break loose like profuse. Amen. Thank you for watching today on YouTube. Please press the subscribe button and also the notification button and like and get the word out so others can watch.